Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of the Twin Flames universe, which was featured in the Netflix documentary, Escaping Twin Flames? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of the Twin Flames universe, then offer my analysis. Jeffrey Ayan was born in 1988 and raised in Michigan. He goes by the name Jeff Divine. It appears as though he had a self-proclaimed deity-inspired name change. When Jeff was in high school, he was active in theater and was on the swim team. After graduating, he went to college in Michigan and studied business. In 2010, he graduated and moved to California. At some point, he had a transcendental, mystical, and spiritual experience after being awakened by yoga and meditation. Not long after this, he moved to Hawaii and declared himself to be a lifestyle design entrepreneur. His mission was to inspire people to live a conscious, heart-centered lifestyle. In 2012, Jeff met a woman online who lived in Arizona. Her name was Megan Plant. They met in person in 2014. Eventually, Megan changed her name to Shalia Divine. The couple eventually moved to Michigan and married. In 2017, they founded a business called Twin Flames Universe. Some people say this business is a cult, but the couple denies this assertion. They claim their organization is devoted to spiritual wellness, relationship guidance, and self-love through connection to one's twin flame. According to their teachings, the twin flame is a person's true love. Each individual has a twin flame, and they are meant to be with this person eternally. So it's like a marriage, except it never ends. It just goes on forever. I guess one can think of the word twin as representing two people, and the word flame representing the fires of hell. The couple has created several educational courses and developed their own brand of quasi-psychotherapy. They have a service called the Mind Alignment Process, or MAP. They claim this process, whatever it is, can treat post-traumatic stress disorder. At one point, Jeff talked about licensing his psychotherapy to the military and becoming a billionaire. The company also has a quasi-therapeutic intervention called the Mirror Exercise, which they regularly ask members to perform. The task involves a member looking in a mirror and focusing on what's disturbing them. After they identify the source of the disturbance, they are to blame themselves for whatever it is. This is accomplished by substituting words in the description of the disturbance so that they are responsible for the problem. For example, if the identified concern is, these immature and comically simplistic cult leaders are taking all my money, the mirror exercise would generate something like, I am giving all my money to immature and comically simplistic cult leaders. In 2019, Jeff and Shalia founded the Church of Union. Their mission was to unify all religion under one spiritual umbrella. Allegedly, Jeff put his for-profit businesses under this religion to reduce tax liability. The Twin Flames universe made money from various business activities, Members would pay thousands of dollars to take courses, which allowed them to adopt glorious titles like Certified Ascension Coach and Master Certified Ascension Coach. There was no mention of a super duper mega master certified Ascension Coach. Maybe they're still working on the courses for that one. Once the member obtained the prestigious status as a coach, they could generate revenue by delivering coaching services to other members. Over time, the Twin Flames universe was involved in various controversies. Many members left the organization, and the families of some of the members who stayed were concerned about their safety and well-being. Jeff and Shalia filed lawsuits for defamation against some of their detractors, in which they specifically referenced driving up the cost of litigation. At the time making this video, the Netflix documentary has led to substantial criticism of the Twin Flames universe. Many people are hoping for an investigation into the alleged wrongdoing, including the allegation that the organization is a cult. They would like to see the Twin Flames universe 
go up in smoke. Despite all this negative attention, the organization continues to operate in Michigan. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. According to the teachings of the Twin Flames universe, people can experience the joy of harmonious union with their twin flame. The teachings indicate that separation from a twin flame is an illusion, which can be healed permanently by purifying one's consciousness. The organization guarantees the harmonious union for those who sincerely commit to studying the teachings and using an ascension coach. Put another way, for those who pay for the products and services of the Twin Flames universe. It's a good thing that members are carrying a torch because it makes burning through their money easier. Item number two, on their website, Jeff and Shalia proclaim that the teachings of the Church of Union are not only a spiritual masterpiece, but they are based on science. They claim that vibrational frequencies of consciousness act as a magnet to attract circumstances into people's lives. If someone is separated from their twin flame, they must have a fearful belief. The teachings help people to identify the blocks to desires and build a divine foundation of love. It sounds like the teachings are nothing but a bunch of random New Age terms which were poorly arranged to form a nonsensical belief system. Item number three, according to the documentary, the idea that everybody must pursue their twin flame has led to some people getting burned. For example, members have faced restraining orders and accusations of stalking. There's a list of questions on the organization's website that people frequently ask Ascension coaches. When looking at these questions, it's easy to see why boundaries are being violated. For example, how do I stop obsessing about my twin flame? Why does my twin flame walk away from me even though I've told them I love them? And how do I stop my twin flame being with a third party? There is a sense that the twin flames universe could double as a training institution for stalkers, like for people who are ready to dramatically improve their ability to rationalize their unwanted pursuit behavior. Item number four, Jeff and Shalia have this belief that every couple is made up of one partner who is masculine and another who is feminine. They are referred to as the divine masculine and divine feminine. These labels do not have to correspond with biological sex, but each couple does require both components. Initially, twin flames could be anywhere in the world, but eventually Jeff declared that all twin flames must be members of his organization. This left Jeff with a logistical problem. Namely, there were many more female members than male members. In December of 2019, Jeff fixed this problem by grouping a number of women together as twin flames, and declaring one member of each couple as divine masculine. So several members of the organization found out after years of being female and having no desire to change, they were now going to be male. It was a big news day. Not surprisingly, this drove a number of members to leave the organization. Item number five, the documentary offered several stories which illustrated how Jeff controlled the members of his organization. One story, which was particularly frightening, featured a young woman named Marley. She had joined the Twin Flames universe and was sent a message by a man in Utah named Joshua. From his position of enlightenment, Jeff declared that Joshua was Marley's twin flame, even though Marley was not attracted to Joshua and found him to be creepy. Marley was 19 years old and Joshua was 30. According to Marley, Joshua was stuck in Utah because he was serving probation. He claimed he had been falsely arrested for having his friend's drug paraphernalia. Marley said that Joshua had a criminal record, no job, and had been diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder. She ended up going to Utah to be with him, but not surprisingly, the relationship failed. Jeff, the matchmaker, gave Marley a trial by fire. Item number six is the Twin Flames universe a cult, as many people have claimed. Let's take a look at the factors that support the idea that it is a cult. Jeff has declared himself to be a deity. For example, he believes that he is the incarnation of Jesus Christ, and he claimed that he was, quote, the master Christ, eternal ruler of all creation by God's loving hand, unquote. 
Jeff maintains a tremendous amount of power and control. He once said, quote, I have stupid authority. This is an unheard of level of authority. No one ever had this level of authority over anyone's life, unquote. Jeff wanted people to believe that he was in a special position to offer a spiritual solution and allegedly tried to isolate people from their families. This created a situation where people were dependent on him. Only Jeff was enlightened enough to identify a person's twin flame. He arranged romantic relationships and marriages. He tried to control other aspects of members' lives as well. For example, at one point, he had a diet plan. It involved eating a lot of carbohydrates and gaining weight in order to become grounded. Technically, he had a point, but I don't think people wanted to become grounded, literally. Members claim that the organization encouraged them to spy on one another. This is extremely common with cults. Jeff had members watch documentaries about a cult and write an essay to explain why he was not a cult leader. During online training sessions and meetings, Jeff insulted his workers and appeared to consider himself superior. He was accused of having a long session with one member who dissatisfied him in an effort to convince her to admit wrongdoing. Jeff earned money from the coaches in two ways. They purchased his products, and they generated revenue through coaching sessions. Having an employee who is also a customer is a sign of a cult. These coaches were always trying to achieve the next level, but the levels never ended. There was no way to ascend to Jeff's level. Jeff implied that in romantic relationships, men should be able to have sex every day. Just about every cult in the world has a component which involves easy access to sex. Allegedly, Jeff talked about buying a large property and having members develop it into a farm. The members would then have golden children who would already be ascended when they were born. I guess during childbirth, Medical personnel would have to be careful not to let the baby float away. Only people who earned at least $10,000 a month would be considered worthy to have a golden child. When considering all the evidence, was Jeff running a cult? In my opinion, yes. It seems clear that the Twin Flames universe was a cult. Item number seven. Why was the Twin Flames universe so successful? Jeff and Shalia seemed abrasive, self-centered, condescending, greedy, simplistic, and irritating. In addition, their teachings don't make any sense. How could anyone be manipulated by such a poorly designed and obviously flawed strategy? People turn to cults for a number of reasons. For example, to get something they want, like a spiritual journey, freedom, or access to drugs. The reason could also be to get away from something they don't want, like toxic family relationships, a restrictive 9 to 5 career, or unpleasant mood states. In the case of the Twin Flames universe, people were attracted to it based on their desire to find a romantic partner. They had an intense feeling of attraction to a potential lover, but then they were rejected. This was a confusing experience, and they were searching for some type of explanation for what went wrong. Was it their fault? Could they recapture the feeling? Were they destined to be alone? They had ambivalent feelings. That is, strong feelings in two directions. On the one hand, they were certain that their emotions reflected some type of deeper truth, like they should be with that particular lover. On the other hand, they blamed themselves for pursuing someone who didn't want them. At some level, they knew their behavior was a moral violation, and they were ashamed. When they connected with the Twin Flames universe, Jeff reinforced the theory about there being a deeper truth by revealing the idea of the twin flame. He also removed the shame people felt when they demonstrated unwanted pursuit behavior. He let them off the hook as far as them blaming themselves, but then he replaced their feelings with a new and more intense type of shame. Jeff taught his followers that they needed to do psychotherapy-style work in order to obtain their harmonious union. They were to blame for their situation because they failed to work on themselves. Everything was their fault. Jeff appeared to understand the power of shame and knew that he needed to be the one who controlled that feeling. Now moving to my final thoughts. The story of the Twin Flames universe is about people who paid money for courses and coaching in a never-ending journey to rid themselves of pain and find their eternal love. 
Ultimately, their search for the twin flame failed to extinguish their shame. It only ended up making them hot under the collar, burning bridges to family members, and lighting the candle at both ends. Those are my thoughts on the case of the Twin Flames universe. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.